Welcome to Springvale Fisheries, beautiful fishery in North Nottinghamshire, just outside Beaver Courts. It's an absolute oasis. It's a beautiful fishery. It's got lots of lakes, which are full of fish. And more importantly, there's always plenty of fishermen here, and that just proves how good it is. Today, we're just gonna do a nice day's pole fishing in spring, which obviously is aptly named because we are at Spring Vale. The buds are on the trees, the fish are starting to wake up, the weather's warming up, and I know we're gonna get loads of bites from what can only be described as a plethora of species. There's everything in here. There's hide, there's roach, there's skimmers, there's tench, there's bream, there's cruisians, and there's plenty of carp. So we're gonna talk you through how we approach a lake that we've never actually fished before. So join us on Peg Nine on first spring and see how we get on. So we've put this box down on Peg Nine on First Spring Lake. And the main reason for that is because like you, when we come pleasure fishing, we want to be comfortable. So we've picked a, a bank where the winds are far back because there's nothing worse than trying to fish into a wind. And you'll see from the people around me, everybody's had the same idea. Why wouldn't you be comfortable? Now, First Spring is a nice open lake and it's got a lot of color. I know the lakes are not too deep. And I also know that um, because obviously we've been here before looking at uh, filming, we've been here netting. Uh, we've got a great video on our YouTube channel that shows you how they maintain this fishery. And the margins are quite shallow, but they go out a long way. And that's all due to fishery protection. Um, when they built these lakes, they made sure that the margins were a little bit further out. So when we plumb up, we're gonna have a little feel around. I know that they're fairly flat and we're gonna fish comfortably, uh, probably around 10 meters. We'll plumb the depth plumb the depth where the depth comes out into this, this inside shelf and we're going to try and target everything on a longer line where we'll probably fish maggots and then we'll probably fish corn and pellets to try and target a few better fish as the day goes on. So we're going to get straight into the action but if you want to look at the rigs, the floats, the hooks and how we've set all that up then there's a nice little link further on and you'll just see that where I go into detailed description of what we're using today. So we know everything that swims lives in this lake. It's got everything in it, as I mentioned. So for me, to approach a lake is to start with something simple uh, and something that everything eats, which is maggots. Don't forget, it is, you know, thinking about being spring, but we've still got cold nights and the fish are just waking up out of winter. So I'm gonna kick off where I'm gonna call my main swim, which is around 10 meters, so it's manageable. Nice wind off the back, and I want to be a little bit further out there because I want to be in that ripple, and I'm just going to put in a nice handful of maggots. And I've potted them in, rather than just throwing a few in, because I want enough to get to the bottom, because we're going to start off on the bottom, just so that we can get a feel for what's in the swim. And that's how I always approach a swim, is to basically nice and gentle, get a feel for it, and build the swim over the day. I don't think you can expect to just sit down and start catching all your best fish, or all your biggest fish, immediately. So, I've just took this through the water rig, the 414s, with a 16 hook on. And basically, I'm going to lay the rig out, and that's a rig that, for me, will cover sort of from half depth down to the bottom. And what I mean by that is because I've got that bulk, some bulk shots, two thirds of the way down the rig, um, and then a few droppers underneath. I'm just going to ping a few maggots over the top because I'm expecting, oh, that's a bite straight away. I told you there were plenty, oh, come off as well. I told you there were plenty of fish in here. Um, because I, I will expect, it's, it is mild, that the fish might want to come up in the water. And that's sometimes what you get with maggots. Now, as I said, I've got pellets and corn, which I'll cup into the line to the side which is a little bit shallower than the main depth. And I'm just gonna feel my way in and find out what they want. Now, these lakes, 
are notorious for massive weights of silverfish, especially in the summer. And you can see why, look, because straight away we're into fish. And that bite was just as the hook was settling. And that rig with the slim float allows us, as I said, to fish all the different depths from halfway down to the bottom. But it sinks slow enough, due to the shape of the body, to allow us to read what's happening. And what I mean by that is you'll see indications, or you might see your float sort of shoot off just as it's settling, just as you've laid it in. And that's an indication to us that the fish are up in the water. Which they can be. I mean, strange as it may seem that, well, the water's still cold, coming out of winter, but I believe the upper layers of most lakes can be, sometimes can be warmer than the bottom, because obviously the cold water sings. And the margins, which are shallower, they'll warm up quicker with the sun. And then, especially with a bit of movement with the wind like this, you can find that the water's moving and the top layers can be warmer. So the fish might be inclined to come up and sit up high in the water. But that one we're on the bottom, the bit had settled. So there are a few maggots getting to the bottom, not getting eaten by the trillions of fish that are in here. It's a nice chunk of little hide. These are great sport. And I suppose that's the beauty of maggots, that it catches everything. So because we've had so many bites so quickly, I'm actually going to put double maggots straight on because I'm, I'm a bit greedy. And I like to catch, like you, better fish. And that's why I've started on a 16, because it's small enough to fish single maggot and it's big enough to fish double maggot. And I just like to, you'll see that when I ship out, before I've got my pole into position, I just flick my rig. And I suppose that's the competitive match angler in me that that just speeds up the process. And what I mean by that is that while I'm still shipping my pole, I'm laying my rig out and it's already on the settle. It's already sort of the float is cocking while I'm settling my pole down. And it just speeds things up a little bit. Now that's certainly got to the bottom, that double maggot look, because it's not gone already and we've not waited that long already in the first three chucks. Which might mean that there's an a missed bite. I might be being a little bit hasty, a bit greedy. I told you to fill your way in and already I've contradicted myself because I can't wait to try and catch bigger fish. But that's what we are as anglers, aren't we? We want to catch the better fish. But sometimes you might just want a day of sport and maggot, especially single maggot, will do that for you. That's another missed bite. So that's telling me that we might not be ready for double maggot yet. And when I said ready, sometimes it takes a little while to build a swim and for the bigger fish to settle. That's one lot of things. Nice fish on the deck. And you can read these floats dead easy due to the fact that they slim and they settle in a very consistent way from the minute you lay them in. So if you want to fish what we call through the water, pick yourself a slim bodied float and you'll see how I've shot at it later on. Which just gives me the best of both worlds. Just remember to just keep flicking a few. That's my short line. Now, fortunately, that shelf is just within within reach. Now, because they're bigger baits, and I'm not expecting there to be tons of little fish eating the pellets and corn, you'll see I've only put in sort of half a dozen pellets, three or four grains of corn. Whereas with this line, I'm feeding a good pouch full of maggots each time because I know that there's a lot of mouths there and to give myself a chance to gather more fish 
and hopefully get some to the bottom because I believe that that's where the, the tension, the bream, the skimmers will be. I'm kind of covering me, covering me options. That's just sitting lovely that. We've picked the right peg with the back wind. It's nice and comfortable. And that just sat nicely for 20, 30 seconds before it went. So I'm confident that we're getting some bait to the bottom. Sometimes it's probably worth remembering that if you do feel that you need to get your bait through the small fish and onto the bottom because you're looking to catch bigger fish you might choose to pick up or use a heavier rig and you could shot it differently so for instance a bulk a bulk type rig where you can gather your shots a lot closer to the hook which will get your bait down through the water faster not really giving chance for small fish to to grab it you can fish double maggot or double caster sometimes worms work really well and be a little bit more patient and fish more positively as we say but for me we'll probably sit here for a few hours build a swim and I think it's nice to catch everything so don't be too selective I can hear carp crashing up far bank which is an interesting point because there that's where all the wind is so that's indicating to me that the water is warm now there's certainly no shortage of fish and that one that looked like a hold up and that's actually took me there and I'm that chuck I actually got a bite as the rig was falling and I lifted and dropped it and we got another bite straight away which is telling me that there's fish up in the water so it might be time to pick up the shallow rig and see if the fish really are up there in the upper layers we'll give that a go Very quickly, we've caught loads of fish on that initial method with that rig through the water. But as I said, we were getting indications on the way down, which just told me that the fish were up in the water. And I'd have got this habit; I wanted to come right up into the feed. And they're lovely chunky fish. So we started off on this four by twelves shallow rig single maggot and I've actually got an 18 on that because I know that sometimes when fish are shallow they, they're snatching at bait and a big hook isn't always the way sometimes you've got to actually fish a small hook to hook the fish and we started off I've got this rig that's got the capabilities because the amount of line I've got on it it's about three foot of line two and a half foot and there's a million fish there now because I'm getting little indications and bites and there's tons of fish there and we started off because I thought well the fish will be sort of a couple of foot down because as I said it's not summer yet and very quickly it's become obvious that the fish are really shallow so I've just kept shallowing up and the trick with that kind of fishing is just to keep shallowing up until you stop getting bites basically because if you're missing bites, I mean look at them, they're cracking fish. If you're missing bites, the chances are that they're actually liners. And when you find the right depth, you'll notice that you hit a lot more bites. And I mean, what is that? We're already down to 12 inches 
11 inches, something like that. And you'll notice that I've got the three number 10s bolts underneath the floor. Uh, sorry, bolts just above the hook length and one underneath the floor. And I think everybody believes that a celery should have a nice spread shotting pattern, but ultimately what we're saying is that the fish are at a depth. So why waste time or make yourself sort of wait for your float to sell and just set your shots to get you to the depth that you believe the fish are at. Determining, obviously, by the fact that you you just keep selling up until you stop missing bites. And having said that, I'm just missing a few there, so I might, might come up another couple of inches myself because that's absolutely black with fish. And there's one more. Look, we kind of had four or five little dibs until we hooked one. Now, yeah, we've caught two quite quickly, but we probably could have caught them even better than that. And that's just incredible. At this time of year, I mean, it's not that long ago that most lakes were frozen. And you might have also noticed that I've actually slowed up with my feed because once you've got them and you've gathered your fish, the trick is to catch them and not just fill your peg with fish flying all over the place. So I've kind of halved what I'm feeding. And that'd help if I've had to fed them in the right place. That's one straight to air, look. Um, hard what I'm feeding to just keep enough bait going in to keep the fish gathered where I'm trying to catch them but not have too many maggots there where there's a million fish flying around and I can't actually hook them and you'll soon know it's all about trial and error because fishing is all about feeding I mean look at that it's a lovely fish it's a cracking eyed and these, the nylon pulling the elastic out. So as I just said, even though we're catching fish, I'm getting a few indications. So I'm just gonna knock a couple of inches off, which might seem not a lot, but I can assure you, these fish will certainly be to death. And there's a killer depth, and there always is. And that could be anything. It could be three foot, and you can move it to two foot six and it changes your catch rate. And even at the shallowest of depths, at a foot and less, an inch or two inches can make all the difference. And we already had a bite there, which means that we've not come too shallow. So if you're still getting indications, they look straight away. And you can keep coming shallow until you stop getting bites and don't, just upset that because you've caught a fish every cast or well, that were it it were done because sometimes i've even seen it where the size of your fish changes depending on the depth that you're at so just to walk you through that i'm actually going to come even shallower and see if they're still there I mean, we're down to eight inches on a cool March day. See if we can catch fish that shallow. Oh, and we've got one straight away. Not a missed bite, it's gone straight under. And we've got one. And if that isn't proof that you've got to mix things up and change things and never just be satisfied with catching one a chuck, because like I said, you might catch them even faster, and you might catch them even bigger. It's not a bad fish. So, keep, keep on your toes. Don't just accept that we're missing bites, then maybe little subtle changes. Could be that you have to go to double maggot, could be that you have to fish a bigger hook smaller up 
it might not be a maggot day, you might be drawing them into your peg and that might not be the way. Sometimes worms and casters is deadly for these kinds of fish. And that's there, there's millions of bites there. Even at that eight inches, and there's another one look. So even I'm amazed at that. And that's why you have to carry all the different rigs with you and all the combinations because the fish always dictate to you how you need to fish. So I've just dropped short, I've blacked that float out. And oh, that's an indication that would have that would probably a carp, but I was just a bit eager on. Just check that that bit. So I've just air rigged a fishery pellet. I fed four mils because I don't think we'll get pestered with small fish, but they're a nice size. And I'm just picking a few around my float like that. Oh, and that was a little indication as well. So, good news is there's a few fish knocking around. And that's an interesting point because, of course, this is my cart rig <coughs> or my bigger fish rig. And there it is. And um, I've opted for that thicker tip float. And that's just proved that that actually might not be a carp. That might be a great big, that might be a great big um, hide. What's going on here? What is that? Well, look at that. Weren't expecting that. <laughs> that's a very fit and healthy, giving a great account for itself, a bream. We have been feeding corn there. That's in absolutely immaculate condition. But what I was just going to say is that I've had a few little dinks and taps. And with a, a float with too fine a tip, you're going to get too many of them. False indications. So when you're fishing a decent sized bait on the bottom, and you don't want to be striking at too many line bites because you'll finish up foul looking fish and a slightly thicker tip is the way to go now there's a lot of talk around thickness of tips and I think it's really important to say that what suits one might not suit another the most important thing with any fishing is to make sure that you're comfortable what I mean by that is that pick a tip that you can see because unless you can read your float you're not fishing you're guessing is it under is it gone is it there <clears throat> without a bite without just a wave make sure you can read your float and the thickness of the tip will determine that for you this is a two and a half mil tip it's quite buoyant and I've got it dotted, because fortunately I can still see. But conditions are perfect for that. Comfort is paramount, really. There's a nice bit of movement on water there. And what I mean by that is that there's a bit of tow, a bit of under tow. That feels like a better fish. And um, I'm just holding my float as steady as I can, just to try and keep my bait still. Because when you're pellet fishing, or corn fishing, or any deck type of fishing, you need to make sure your bait's static. Because heavy and loose feed doesn't roll on the bottom. Maggots will move. You know, when you're loose feeding maggots, they're always on the move, and I think fish 
don't mind ticking maggots when they're on the fall but ordinarily all the pellets that they're eating out of your swim are stationary so you have to make sure that your hook bait is doing exactly what your feed's doing so we were just hanging on to that float and we've had a bite I've got an awful feeling this might actually not be hooked in the mouth. Again, that wiggly, wiggly feeling that you sometimes get with your hook one in the tail. Yeah, thought so. And that will be foul hooked. It looked like a bite. Nice clean hook hole, but. And that were another bite. Missed. So there's obviously a few fish here, and I'm just flicking these pellets in, and because there's a nice wind that's coming off my back, I can actually feed quite tight. Now, it's quite deep here as well, so obviously I'm throwing them in by hand. I like to think that I'm drawing a few fish in, a bit of noise. I want to make sure that the fish know I'm there. Now, I foul up that one and I missed a bite and I think I've had a few indications and that's another one there, so it might be that I need to tighten that bait up. And what you can do is you can actually put a pot on. I know a lot of people like to fish with a pot. And that means it's ultra tight, ultra accurate. And probably your pellets will go down together and keep the fish on the deck because what you don't want to do is have fish flying around now of course there's another thing that you have to consider where look how shallow the fish were on the long line look how shallow them the mide were and it might mean that we're actually fishing in too deep a water but I've opted for just out the main depth and that's another big fish. I've just opted for, you know, it's about six inches out of the deepest part. Because like I said to you earlier, it's not quite, that's not a carp either. It's not quite summer yet. What have we got here? It's wrapped around that is. That's a little carp. So they're certainly coming in. Now, I'm beginning to think, it's a foul looked one, that I do need to tighten up my bait a little bit. Or maybe slow down on how many pellets I'm feeding because I might be lifting the fish. So I'm just going to grab a little pot. So, we're getting an odd bite, but I've got a funny feeling, and the eyed and what they did earlier, and making me feel that. These carp are actually in shallower water, so I've just got the same rig and I've took, basically, a foot off. And rather than plumbing up and then adjusting my floor, I've took a foot off because I think the fish are in shallower water. And I've just stuck a plummet on, marking where I am on my pole. And I've just swung it round a little bit, have a little plumb round, find my marker, which in this case will be bang on to that life boy on the other side. And I'm just gonna feed a little bit shorter because I think the fish wanna be, wanna be up. And that's why we're getting indications and pricking a few fish. Because the thermal layers or whatever you wanna call them, the upper layers of the water are probably the warmest part and that's where all the fish wanna be. This is a great example of why you don't decide how you're going to fish before you get here. The fish tell you, they dictate what you do. So don't always presume to know. Now if you're a regular at a venue or 
to a venue you know or your friend's been, then you might have that information to hand. But as that's the first time we've, we've fished this lake, you can only go on what you know. So every day is a school day. So it's basically one joint less, at least a foot shallower. I'm just going to leave that rig long for the time being. And just feed on that new line. Nice healthy pot of pellets. Just hold my pole a bit further back because I've got a bit more line to play with. If we start getting bites, I can shorten that down and there you go. Look at that. How amazing is that? And that's fishing. Because I feel that that is what's been wrong. We've been trying to feed the fish in an area where the depth is too deep for them. So they've come to the pellets, but they were at a depth that was shallower than, so they were probably intercepting our pellets on the way down. And um, by coming to, a, to the part of the lake where the bottom is at the depth they want to be, we've immediately found one. And that feels like a really good fish. Just this time of year, if you're catching smaller carp and some of your venues that you go to with are F1s, we've chosen elastic that will cover us for everything we need to do. And the advantage of having these puller kits these days is that even a softer elastic like that, I mean, look at that. I'll show you, don't. Slap bang in the chops because we've changed. One little thing, we took a foot of depth off, come into where the fish are comfortable, and we've had one straight to it. Right in the top lip, textbook style. I'll just lift that up and show you. And if that's not a cracking little example of understanding fishing, then I don't know what it is. Absolutely pristine fish here. I'm going to pop him back because he's far too feisty for my liking. But the fit as fiddles, beautiful fish, and I reckon we'll catch a few now on that margin. And that just goes to prove that you can't stop working and you can't stop trying to understand what the fish are doing. Because they dictate what you do, not you. So rigs for today, obviously when we look at a venue like this and we know that it's not particularly deep, in this case that's about five and a half foot, we want to go for a rig that's going to be able to provide us with everything that we need. So I'm going to start off by loose feeding maggots on my long line, and which means I'm going to catch fish in all depths. So the perfect choice for me is a nice slim floor, and in this case that's actually a cypre. And due to the depth and the fact that we've got the window far back, I've gone for a 414s. What that allows me to do is have enough weight on the line to be able to control the rig, hang on to it and let it fall through the water. So if I'm catching just off the bottom or two or three foot off the bottom, then this floor will settle nice and quick, uh, sorry, nice and slowly and just fall through the water. And because of the shape of the body, it settles very, very evenly like that all the way down. And what I've actually done is just gone for a, a spread shotting pan which starts at about 45 centimeters away from the the hook length uh, loop there's three number tens followed by a little 10 kicker it just kick, stops tangles that's about an inch below and then it goes two inches three inches four inches five inches and then a six inch gap at the bottom so i've got a nice steady floor that'll allow me to feel where the fish are in the water and what they're doing so that's my main on the bottom rig or deck rig as we like to call it and then for the shorter line, I've basically, when I was plumbing up with that rig, and a little tip for you is, when I've come back, I've just plumbed up, used that rig and found where, where the main depth comes up and it starts to shallow up. For the shorter rig, because I'm hoping to fish pellets and bigger baits, I've actually gone for a similar shaped um, 
body, but this is a slightly dump here. This is a Fury. Again, this one is in a 414s because I want to get down really quickly on that and I'm going to shot it slightly different. But it's got a slightly thicker tip because if we're going to catch carp and they're going to be sucking and blowing on your bait, you don't, and, and also more importantly, liners, you want a nice stable uh, bristle like that. This is two and a half mil, just so that you're not striking at liners and you're not getting false indications and it's enough to hold a sizable bait which could be a banded pellet. <clears throat> With this one, I've actually got my shots over about 30, 30 centimetres, that might even be 250 actually, and that's just tapered and slightly spread apart, the bottom one being three or four inches from uh, the knot, there's one on the knot, three or four inches, three inches, two and a half inches, an inch and inch. And basically that's a little bit more positive because I probably won't be catching fish on the drop with that, they'll be just off the bottom, so just enough down on the deck to just allow that to sink slowly. The main rig out there has got a B911, size 16, so I can put single or double maggot on it, and that's to an O12, and then this one has also got a 911 eyed, and that's in a 16 with a little bait band on it, and that's to O14 to give me a little bit of uh, a little bit more strength. The inside line's got white zip on it, so I can and with a with a puller kit, and then the long one has got our yellow zip on it, which will be soft enough to catch eyed roach and skims and small fish but still have enough power if I need to strip and pull with the puller kit to land fish. I've also then on top of that set myself up a shallow rig and you'll notice that there's about two and a half, nearly three foot of line on that rig. So that allows me to go from two and a half foot in depth right down to, as you'll see it there, at the moment it's set at 10 inches. And it's got four number 10s on it, which allows me to either bulk or spread so I can fish in the upper layers. So I can fish right down to about eight inches or I can take it right up to two foot. And it's a nice little dumpy float with a visible tip on it and that's a 412's Tinks. And then last but not least, I've got the, this is what I call a searcher rig. This is a four by 10 Cipri and that's got four foot of line on it so I can fish nearly down to the bottoms on my main line and I can spread it or bulk it and that basically has given me the option so if they're not really shallow or they're not down on the deck I can find where they are and then we can tailor make that but as the session's obviously gone on you'll have noticed we've talked about rigs and what we've done whether we need to chase the fish up or keep them on the bottom but that'll depend on the feed and the weather but that's the uh, that's the rig clinic and uh, hope you've enjoyed it. Another stunning spring bell carp that just goes to prove that they definitely want to be in shallower water today and I'm going to say that if we continue this session and keep flicking a few pellets in, we could probably even catch them shallow. But it's just goes to prove to you that you can never ever decide before you come to a session how you're going to fish it. But we've had a cracking day here. Our first ever session on first spring, the lake. If you want to catch everything that swims, and you want to choose how you want to do it, I'm sure that there's a peg here at Springvale Fisheries that will accommodate you. We've certainly had a great day. I hope you've learned a few bits and you can join us. If you want to see more of these types of videos, we've got plenty on our channel. So join us again for the next session. Cheers. <laughs>